Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 16 books that I've read so far in February. <laughs> Have 16 books that I've read however I'm going to be mentioning 19 books in this video because I did have three DNFs and I'm the type of person that wants to talk about the reasons why I DNF the book so um we're going to be talking about those books as well and then the majority of these books 12 of these books were for the novella -athon. that vlog will be linked down below if you'd like to check it out and want to know my real in time in depth thoughts on all of those novellas so let's get started the first one that i have is a doozy because it is my first book of the month and my first dnf and some people might yell at me about this but it is puck me secretly by odette stone i did not like this at all. The heroine of this book is on her way to be with her dad, who is a, uh, I think, hockey team owner in Canada somewhere, I think Vancouver. And on her way there on the plane ride, she has a little bit too much to drink. She's very babbly towards the guy sitting next to her, who's very quiet, but very beautiful. Um, and then they survive a plane crash together. And um, afterward, they have an amazing night, but he, I think he leaves without like saying a word, like sneaks down in the middle of the night and she's kind of like, okay. And then long story short, she ends up figuring out that he is one of the hockey players on the hockey team. She is now going to be working at underneath her dad's position. I just did not care about this. This couple, I just didn't care about. And the heroine I felt like had zero backbone because her dad was wanting to do all of these things. And these coaches were being mean to her on this hockey team. And I'm like, girl, stand up yourself or tell your dad what these guys are saying to you like come on and then the main thing that made me dnf this book was the girl conflict the girl drama the other girl drama like ugh, it wasn't even other girl she wasn't even considered being his other girl there's this girl who works on the hockey team who basically is sabotaging the heroine here's relationship because she wants him instead or something like that i don't care about that i I'm gonna talk about this in a video that's gonna be coming out very soon, but that is one of my romance no-nos. Like, like a part of my romance turn-off list is when the conflict of a romance has to do with another ex or another person. Pers like, it other person drama dealing with their relationship when it comes to someone liking someone in the couple and sabotaging the romance. Like, ex drama, ex conflict, other person conflict. I feel like that is a cheap form of conflict <laughs> like I don't see that as true conflict in a romance they write conflicts about ex like exes of all people like you couldn't think of anything else like that's what uh I hate being a negative Nelly but like it really 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 grinds on my gears and I'll get more into that in my um romance dislike video coming out later this month but that's for the reason why I didn't have this. I was so sick of this girl butting her head into their relationship and sabotaging it. And then the heroine just like had no backbone to her in general. And so I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm sorry if you like this book. Please tell me why you like this book. I would honestly like to know. I know people really like book two. And some of my friends have DM'd me saying, oh, I did not like book one. I DNF'd it too, but I read no, I did not like book one. I DNF'd book one, but then I read book two and fell in love with book two, so. Next, I ended up reading Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Oh my word, I adore Talia Hibbert. If you did not know, I feel like she's one of the best writers in romance today. Like, she is a stunning writer. This is her YA debut. She writes romance books, so this is her first young adult romance novel, and it was so stinking cute. I loved it. This is the romance between Celine and Bradley, and it's kind of like frenemies to lovers situation. Um, these two were childhood best friends, grew up together. Something happened in high school when they got to high school that kind of broke their friendship apart, and now they haven't been friends for quite a long time, and they actively do not like the other person. But they're both I think juniors or seniors in high school um, getting ready to send out like college applications and stuff and so both of them have to work together on this outdoor camping survival thingy I don't know how to describe it um in order to hopefully get like a scholarship and they get paired up quite a lot on this outdoor wilderness thing um so a lot of hijinks and hilarity ensue they really delve into in this book like what happened to their friendship and why they aren't friends anymore and how they have changed as people and how they've stayed the same and like how they hurt the other person like this book 
really talks about good communication to a certain point at the beginning of this book you like have the two of them like butting heads like glaring at each other but then once they start opening up and revealing their feelings they're like oh well i thought you did this oh i thought you did that like they're very good at communicating for being juniors in high school uh, to a certain point i loved both of these characters i felt like they could be real people like Charlie Hibbert is amazing at writing characters and making them full-fleshed people i thought this was a great representation of 17 year olds trying to figure out their life I loved it. And also this book gets bonus points for me because one of Celine's friends has celiac disease. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> There's also OCD rep in here. Bradley has OCD. So if you want to read a book that has that rep in it, please pick this one up. I obviously gave this book five out of five stars. We have another DNF and it's a book that I was not wanting to DNF, but I just had to. This is Fighting Silence by Ali Martinez. I'm really making an effort this year. This year is going to be my year for DNFing. I don't want to read books or finish books that I know is going to be below 3.5 stars. That's no point for me. I won't be enjoying it. I won't be recommending it to other people. So what's the point of finishing it if I already know it's going to be lowly rated? That was the case for this book. The hero and the heroine of this book went to high school together, but they never interacted while they were at school. However, they lived close to each other in this kind of rundown apartments and they find this abandoned apartment in a building close to theirs. And that's kind of like their refuge where the only time they're able to interact with each other or they let themselves interact with each other is in this apartment. They spend a lot of time there. They both seek refuge there. They don't have really great home lives. The heroine's family parents are kind of neglectful, don't really care about her. And then the heroine's mother is kind of out of the picture a lot. And this high schooler is kind of in charge of his brothers. Like he's basically taken on the father role for his younger brothers. So they go into this apartment a lot to draw, to talk, um, to just like be best friends like that is their space but things happen after high school and that's all I want to say for this one I don't want to spoil it in case you do want to read it the hero in here I will say the reason why I wanted to read this book is because the hero in here I heard was hard of hearing which he is he has a condition where his ability to hear will lessen and lessen but there's that representation in there I don't know if it's a good rap if it's own voices rap I personally don't know I just want to let y'all know that is in the book the reason why I denect this book is because the hero does something I don't really like with heroes. And that is a hero who puts off being with the heroine who says he can't have the heroine because he's not good enough for her. Or it's gonna break up this friendship that they have. Like, I don't care. <laughs> he was like so mad if she would talk about other guys, but then he wouldn't want to be romantically involved with her anyway because he was not wanting to be with her because he was not good enough for her. It was. I don't like that. I don't like that. So um, I didn't finish this. And plus this is more of a new adult level. Like I think they're both like 19 or 20. And I feel like now new adult books are just not for me, not my vibe anymore. I feel like there's a lack of maturity in a lot of these characters that I don't enjoy reading about. <laughs> and I feel like literally the last book, the young adult book, the characters were more mature than this new adult novel honestly. Next, I ended up reading Western Waves by Brittany Cherry. This is the romance between Damien and Stella. You've met Damien in the previous book in the series, and he was known for being a very stoic, grumpy <laughs> man and didn't have a lot of friends. He has like one friend in his entire life, and he kind of puts himself on the outsides of everyone. Stella in here in this book, she has a very interesting life a kind of traumatic childhood her mother ended up passing when she was very young and um her mother's best friend i forget his name but he ended up getting custody of stella throughout his custody of her he has had some horrible wives he's had like three wives in the whole time that uh Stella's been under his guardianship. Um, he is amazing. He's an amazing father, an amazing guardian. However, he would bring these wives into the home that would just tear Stella down, like tear her down as a human being. Like it was awful. Like all three of these women <laughs> were awful human beings and it left a horrible lasting impact on her. And she ends up reading or getting read the will of her father. Like that's her father. He ends up dying and the will is read aloud and Stella will get like millions of dollars if she ends up marrying the biological son of um, the dad, which he did not know about until like recently. He didn't know that he fathered a son. So that's why Stella and Damien never knew each other. And so the two of them have to get married and do kind of like the marriage of convenience, get married for a certain amount of time in order, in order to get some money. But then the two obviously fall in love. I really did like this one. I love the discussion 
of family in here and how family does not mean that you have to be blood related to someone. Like the heroine's grandmother is not actually her grandmother, but she calls her her grandmother. Like that is her grandmother, even though she's not like biologically her grandmother, that is her grandmother. Her father is not biologically her father. He adopted her, but that's her father. And he treated her uh, like, like a father should, like he was an amazing father. I really love how we got to see both of these characters grow as individuals. I love those in romances. Like you see both of them be dynamic characters that are able to grow. There were just a few things in here that I thought were super unnecessary. <laughs> um, like I felt like it was a lot to have all three of these women be horrible to Stella and like jab and poke at her. And then there's one point where Damien's trying to figure out who his biological mother is. And it happens to be one of those three women and he's trying to figure it out. Like, I feel like it was a lot and some things like didn't necessarily need to happen. You know, like didn't need to be included. But overall, I really did enjoy this romance. For tropes in here, um, there's adoption. A uh, brooding hero and it's a marriage of convenience. I gave this book 3.75 out of 5 stars. The next book that I'm going to mention is Speechless by Lindsay Lanza. This book really intrigued me. I saw this, I think, on an Instagram post and someone said that there is um, endometriosis rep and there is a service dog in this book, which I have not read a lot of romances with service dogs and I have, I've done a lot of, re not a lot of research, I've done some research about service dogs because I personally a dream in life is to find a gluten detection service dog um like that would be the dream um I I follow a lot of people <laughs> that um have dogs like that and it's just like the dream but then it costs a lot of money or you got to train them when they're really young I don't have the time for that regardless anyway so I was really excited to read this because it had endo rep and a service dog in it I was like so I'll pick it up right now. This is the romance between Lucy and Henry. They end up meeting on an airplane, technically right before they board on an airplane, um, but then they end up sitting next to each other. And Lucy is shocked when like they start talking. She realizes that Henry is her favorite composer. She listens to a lot of instrumental like um, music. Is that the right word? Like music without words? Scores, like movie scores. There you go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Like movie scores. And Henry writes some of her favorites of all time. Like she is his favorite musician. And so she is very shocked when Henry um, puts this opportunity in her lap. Basically, she is telling him that her uh, living arrangements just fell through. Like they're going to LA. They're going to play to LA and she's about to move in somewhere. The plans end up falling through. And he's like, well, why don't you just come stay with me until you find your footing? And he, she's like, what? <laughs> well, Henry ends up living in this huge house with his whole production team um, because he has social anxiety and his he, he's not able to leave his house often because he gets very clammed up and very closed off. And so the social anxiety representation in here, A+. Plus. I really related to that. I thought it was fantastic. So his production team ends up living with him in this big home. Like Henry is a very rich. So she gets one of the guest rooms in the house. The people on his production team just so happen to be Henry's best friends and they spend a lot of time together and they welcome Lucy with like open arms. And so Henry and Lucy become like fast friends and then it develops into something more, but Lucy doesn't want it to progress into something more. She doesn't, she doesn't because she's scared of a man leaving her again. Um, Her ex was a piece of work. And I think uh, one of the main reasons she's hurt is because he found um, her chronic illness to just be like really debilitating for him. Like, <laughs> we're not gonna get into that because that is awful. There were a few things that I did love about this book. Like I mentioned, I love the anxiety representation. So the social anxiety rep because I have social anxiety and the way that the hero like described his feelings when he was feeling socially anxious, I was like, that is it. That is it, my dude. I also loved how much music played into this book. I haven't read a book like that before where music is so heavily represented in every aspect of both characters' lives. Like, I thought that was beautiful. There were just some things in here I personally wish were taken out of the book. Number one, I feel like this book was way too long. I do. I don't think it needed to be over 300 pages, like close to 400. Like, I don't think it needed to be that long at all. And I personally could have done without that much friend page time. The hero is living with his friends who's his, who are, who is his production team. And the heroine spends a lot of time with his friends and not him. There was even a point in this book where I'm reading about her hanging out with all of these roommates of his and not Henry. And I'm like, is this a why choose romance? Like why is she spending so much time with these guys? Like I, I didn't see the point in it. And I even wrote in my review, like, I honestly would have loved this book so much more if there were no friends living with them. 
like like if they were alone in the home together and they had to learn how to live together alone like that would have been so much better for me but that's just my personal preference and what i enjoy in romance stories it would have been way more intriguing if henry and lucy lived in the home without anyone else there they would be forced into situations together that would have made an amazing points in the romance i also selfishly just wanted more page time when it came to the chronic illness in here i felt like it was so lacking um for a book that markets itself as having endometriosis rep there was not a lot about endometriosis in here so selfishly i wanted more i wanted to learn more i wanted to know more i wanted to see more page time it was just really strange for me because the heroine is talking about her endo and how debilitating it can be, which I know it can. I have friends who have endo. I totally understand. But then she mentions like 60% of the way through the book, oh, I haven't felt like almost any effects from it for the past three months. And I'm just like, what? Like, why? My friends who have endo, let me know. I don't know if that's good rep or not. We're just like, the whole time she's been in LA, she's had like almost no symptoms of her endo. And I'm just like, is that realistic? I don't know. <laughs> I also wanted more information and screen time about the service dog. And also as someone who is chronically ill, I personally don't like how some people use chronic illness, like authors use chronic illnesses or disabilities as a secret in the book to be the point of conflict in the book. No one has to disclose their disability. I'm not saying that, you do not have to do that, but I just don't like how that is a point of conflict in the story. <laughs> like out of everything you can make a conflict, you make it about someone's chronic illness. I just didn't personally vibe well with the fact that she did not disclose her chronic illness to the people she's been living together for months with. I felt like it was maybe irresponsible to not mention at least something because it could be potentially dangerous, especially like just to someone you live with, at least one person you live with. So they know the safety measures or like are able to help you in your time of need. And so it just, I didn't, I did not love that. Um, I'm giving this book two stars. I, I did not enjoy this book, unfortunately. Okay, I've been talking for a while, so I'm just gonna put some pictures on the screen. I read these 12 books for the novella-a-thon that happened from February 6th to the 13th, or no, 12th, <laughs> the 12th. And uh, you can know all of my thoughts and all of my ratings in my novella-a-thon rating vlog that is linked down below, but I'm not gonna be getting into them now because I still have a few more books to mention. Next, I ended up picking up Two Scoops of Hellfire by Kimberly Lemming. I read my first Kimberly Lemming during the novella-a-thon. I read that time I got drunk and saved a demon or something like that, and I loved it. <laughs> I was so entertained by it. And so I was on um, one of the live shows with my lovely co-hosts, and um, they were talking about this book. And they were like, Avery, it's about her falling in love with a demon and she's a baking. And I'm like, sold. Demons, <laughs> baking, count me in. <laughs> it's only 30 pages, but you know what? I enjoyed it. I gave it 3.5 stars. <laughs> Basically, her heroine in here accidentally summons a hellfire demon. <laughs> and they have some fun together. <laughs> really cute for tropes baking demons it's on kindle limited and it's a novella and the last book i have to mention is a book i also dnf'd <laughs> this is a good night's sleep by stephanie simpson i started this and dnf'd it today i got to 12 percent, and i was like i don't think so this was on my february tbr and i wanted to pick this one up because i know that every book in the series has like chronic illness or disability rep of some sort however i don't think this author's writing style is for me i know that the two characters in this book the couple they are next door neighbors she ends up moving next to him at his apartment complex um and then he has like chronic insomnia and has a really hard time sleeping and i think she helps him with his chronic insomnia i got to 11 12 percent of this book and decided to put it down I did not vibe well with this author's writing style. I personally, it really bugs me when I read romance books where there are time jumps in the middle of a paragraph or without a break in a chapter. Like I'm fine with it time jumping in the chapter if there's like a break, you know what I mean? Like normally there's like a line that indicates, oh, we have added, had a new section. Like we are in a new time. Like here is this transition. Like. I'm fine with that. I, I just need the line to indicate to me or a new chapter to start, you know? It just, it's a personal preference of mine. I am so confused when time jumps in the middle of a paragraph or without a break. And in the 10% that I read, that happened like five times. And I was so confused. I had to go back and be like, 
why does this say like someone did this? Is it the next day? Like what is going on? And it just took me out of the story over and over and over again. When I read a few chapters, I decided to go look um, on the Goodreads page to see if any of my friends read it to see what they thought of it because I was curious if it got better or like if the story was just good enough for me to push through this writing. Um, but none of my friends have read this, but I do follow this um, or I'm friends with this account on Goodreads called Trigger Warning Database where a lot of romance books they go in and um, write the trigger warnings as reviews that are in it that's in the books um, and so like one of there's like a long list of triggers for this book and one of them is like on page of miscarriage like accidental pregnancy and miscarriage and I was like I'm done. I personally don't like reading about that it makes me very uncomfortable and very upset and um just it's one of my triggers that I have. So I saw that and I was like, you know what? I don't think it's worth it to read this book. I'm not liking the writing style. And then I know that I'm gonna have to read about a non page miscarriage. So I won't finish it. <laughs> Anyways, there you have it everyone. Those are all the books that I read and didn't finish in the month of February so far. Um, I'm trying to get better about DNFing books. Like I don't wanna finish books I don't think I'll like. I know I was kind of a negative Nelly today, but you know what? These are my thoughts on these books. I'm sorry if you like them, but they just didn't vibe well with me and that's okay. If you like them, amazing. I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad they worked for you. For me personally, the four books that I was kind of ranting over today just weren't my vibe. Anyways, <laughs> let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a pink heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.